Hi, I'm Samuel Webster from the internet and this is a review of a bass that I've actually had for a while. This is my very own and I thought I might just show some of the instruments that I already play uh, before reviewing some other things. So I'm going to get straight into this. This is a Harley Benton uh, electric upright bass and this is a really good middle range test of a bass, let's say. If you're thinking about getting into double bass and you already play electric, this is a good start. If you play double bass and you think uh, it's getting heavy, this is another option. I'm going to try and run through some options today and, and sort of show you how it plays and how it sounds and some of the issues I've had, some ways to resolve it and what I think in general. So first things first, this is not a hollow bass. What that means is it doesn't project a lot of sound. It also means that the body shape, uh, which might help a little bit with projecting sound, being a kind of portable upright bass or a portable double bass, that doesn't help either. So I thought the first thing I would just show you how it sounds when you don't have anything plugged in. So this is just with a condenser mic ahead of it and you're going to hear that it, it lacks a little bit of warmth. So it lacks the fundamental, but it does have that kind of big sound that comes from having extra long strings, flat strings, and the physical nature of playing this bass. So it's, it's also about knowing its limitations. Are you going to throw a mic in front of it live? No, it's going to be useless like that. It doesn't have that projection. But like me, I'm working on a project now where I really kind of want to hear that finger sound and I think, well, should I play a double bass? Should I play an electric double bass? Um, and what I really like is if I've got a nice studio room, this could work really well as kind of a mixture sound. So we take the, the piezo pickup areas, which is underneath the bridge, and we run that out and we run the microphone for sort of string noise, finger noise, things like that. I think the mix is quite good. Uh, so let me just swap over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the audio that you're hearing on the direct out of this amplifier. So this is all pre-EQ, there's nothing touched. And I have the tone on full. Now I've got to say, I read a lot of reviews on this bass and the first thing that people do is turn off the tone, which is kind of against what you're used to if you play electric bass. The tone knob usually is a full sound with a nice treble, but it's got a bass fundamental. This is really all treble with the tone on. So that's fine if you want to use it to kind of tune a room, but most people don't like it. I've found that when I feed this bass to uh, a sound engineer on a gig and I've got the tone mode turned all the way on, they hate me for it because I have to work a lot to get a sound out of it. So let me turn the tone knob all the way off and you can hear what it sounds like if I just take that away. Okay, so it's a much smoother sound. I tend to find that that overpowers. If I put that into an amplifier, it tends to be a little bit too heavy and just gives a really solid oomph, but you don't really feel it, which, you know, that's a tone thing and tone is about taste. There are people that want a double bass that you, you feel, but you don't necessarily hear the individual notes. 
I don't really like a walking bass where I'm not feeling the harmony shifts. So I like something that has a little bit of edge to it. So what I like, I've actually marked on this because this is a dial with no numbers. I've actually marked a point which is, let's say about 70%. And it's the sound that I like to play with, which is this one. Okay, so that's a little better. Why is it? It's a mix. I would say if you're going to buy this bass, that's the first thing. Find the tone you like that's coming out. Stick your headphones in because it does have a headphone out, which is critical. Stick your headphones in. Have a listen and go, oh, no, yes, no, yes, until you find it. That's basically my, my first tip before you even start playing with amp settings. Now, I'm about to record a project and I'm thinking, well, do I use a double bass or do I use an electric bass or do I use a, an electric upright? And one of the things I'm actually going to kind of look into is this mixture. So let's see what it sounds like mixing the condenser mic. Now, this is a big room, a lot of reverb going on, but let's see what happens if we mix this condenser mic with the electric pickup sound. I think that can work. You know, we need a little bit of that organic, that organic kind of fingerboard sound, or we could just play electric bass, this is true. Or we could just play really softly, but softly in jazz on a double bass, I feel like it gets lost a little bit. How have I got this bass set up to give you an idea of what I'm doing to get that sound? Well, the bridge is at its minimum and the strings aren't really flat against the neck. So while I do think it's a pretty good setup in terms of a double bass, if you're looking for really low strings to get a sort of electric upright sound that's almost like a fretless, this doesn't quite make it all the way down. The bridge still gives a certain height. Basically, it's not necessarily an electric bass with a double bass shape or a double bass size. Now, speaking of size, I'm 1 meter 83, 6 foot tall. And this is at its most extended with the end pin. I'm standing up. This is really a three quarter instrument max, not a full size. And you've got to think about that. Why do you have to think about that? Because if you play like I do, where I've taken off the arm and I play straight against the body, otherwise it would be here. That's, for me, it's kind of low. I don't mind it, but the further it gets away, the further it feels lower. And if you want to play angled like this, it's very low. It's, I once saw an episode of Star Trek where they had a double bass in the background and they obviously didn't take the end pin out. And there was this gigantic man playing a double bass like this. It's just really unwieldy. So if you're my height and you don't mind playing straight, it works fine. If you like a little bit of angle, this might not be the option and you might have to add something to extend it because this is really at its most extended. Let's talk about the arm. This comes with an arm. I played it for a second, took it out and never put it back in. That's basically because it doesn't make much sense. The arm on this space comes out from the top and it connects back in here. Now, the problem with that is it creates the shape of a double bass body, but it creates the front shape of a double bass body. When you play a double bass, however, you have the whole depth of a double bass. So really what the arm should do is actually sit back here. If you want that shape, this is the way it should be. 
but it's straight. So if you want to use it actually to have that space as you would normally, you end up playing really horizontal and you don't really want to play at a 90 degree angle to the bass. It's really bad for your wrist. So if you want to play like this, this absolutely does nothing. I've seen people online who bend it. It's one option. I just got rid of it. I got rid of it and said, I'm, I'm going to play bass tight. And that's worked for me. Absolutely fine. But when you look at that arm, just know it's a straight arm and not, it's a straight arm in that it goes directly nine degrees from the base. It does not go back where it should. I've also heard people putting uh, something underneath between the pickup and the bridge to absorb that sound so that the tone knob isn't so aggressive. For me, I just turn the tone knob down. But some people, you know, kind of like a really kind of thudding sound. I actually think that tone knob on minimum is too much for me. So I don't need it to be even darker, but that's been one option. Apart from that, this is a really sturdy bass. This is a sturdy bass. If I turn it around and show you, behind we have the, what would be where the arm attaches, which I've removed. It's actually got a spread and you can attach uh, either a, a drum stand or a microphone stand if you have the right connections. And I often do that because I play in groups where I can't always have the bass and I don't want to pick it up and put it down and pick it up and put it down. So often I'll play this actually mounted. So that's a good option. We have the power uh, switch, which above it has a headphone output and we have the battery. The battery lasts forever, basically. Um, and then we have the connection on the side. If you use a right angle jack, it works really well because the cable doesn't stick out and you can run it directly behind. If you're really clever, you run it behind the end pin and it stays together really nicely. Finish. Well, it's not a woody bass. It's a sunburst bass. I prefer a sunburst to a black but it, do, it doesn't look like a double bass. Nobody thinks it's a double bass. It doesn't even try to be a double bass. It doesn't try to have that wood sense. It's very electric bass in a double bass body, let's say. But the, the fingerboard is really quite nice. I actually find this bass really nice to play. It doesn't play really tough like some double basses do. The tuning knobs are very smooth, very tight. Uh, so they, I feel like they're very precise. I don't feel like it's going to fall apart at any point. The bridge has been very sturdy. You have to install it yourself, but it's very easy um, to just shift it. If you have any problems with shifting the angle, you, you can just fix it very quickly by pushing up and down with the strings a little bit loosened. Mine has a logo right above the bridge because there's no logo on the headstock, I suppose. I don't really like that. Ride, riding on the body, it's not really my thing, but nobody else has noticed it. So this is really a personal, private matter. Um, so now I'm just gonna play a little bit. I just want you to hear it. I'm gonna try and give you some, uh, a nice sound from it. So this is not gonna be just direct out of the pickup like before. This is going to be, if I add a little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression, and we can really hear what it sounds like. So I hope you enjoy it, and I hope this has helped you learn a little bit more about this bass. <laughs> 